Hello, everyone. So the next section of our quadrilaterals unit is going to be over uh, the first type of special quadrilateral we're going to cover, which is parallelograms. So parallelograms have five different properties that you're going to need to memorize. So for each of these, there's going to be a picture and um, the finish of this sentence. So if a quadrilateral is a parallelogram, then the opposite sides are parallel. Go ahead and draw your picture. And then we know how to label parallel sides. So the top and bottom are going to be parallel, and the left and right sides are going to be parallel. If you're in pre-AP, I'm also going to write all the implied statements on there, so I will be looking for that in my notes check. So make sure you have it down. Next, if a quadrilateral is a parallelogram, then opposite angles are congruent. So we mark congruent angles with arcs. So the top left and bottom right angles are congruent, and then the bottom left and top right angles are congruent. Do redraw the picture every time because uh, each of these rules have different things, and if you draw it all in one, it gets modge podge together, and it'll be really difficult for you to read later when you need it for your homework. Next, if a quadrilateral is a parallelogram, then opposite sides are congruent. So we mark congruent with little tick marks. So the top and bottom are congruent, and then the left and right are congruent. Next, if a quadrilateral is a parallelogram, then the diagonals bisect each other. So that means that the point in the middle where the two diagonals intersect each other is the midpoint of each diagonal. And last, if a quadrilateral is a parallelogram, then the consecutive angles are supplementary. So like we said earlier, we know opposite angles are congruent, so that's why my x's are across from each other and my y's are across from each other. And like this says, the consecutive angles are supplementary, so that means x plus y is equal to 180 degrees. So those are the five rules that you need to have memorized about parallelograms. Let's give these, um, these rules a try with some examples. So if you please pause the video, uh, draw the pictures, and try these problems on your own, and then check your work with me in a minute. All right, so looking at number one, the parts that we have labeled are sides. So immediately, two things should pop into your mind. We know that opposite sides are congruent, and we know that opposite sides are parallel. In this case, parallel doesn't really help us at all. So we know we're focusing on opposite sides are congruent. So I'm going to label my picture to show opposite sides are congruent. Right away, it should pop out to me that AB and DC are congruent, and I have both those angle measures. I mean, sorry, both those side measures. So I want to set those equal to each other. 7x minus 12 is equal to 4x plus 3. So if you add 4x to, uh, subtract 4x from both sides and add 12 to both sides, then you end up with 3x is equal to 15. Divide both sides by 3, and you find that x is equal to 5. Now look back up at the top. Is that what they asked us for? No, it's not. They asked us for AD. And if you look on our picture, we don't have a measurement for side AD. But uh, what we labeled earlier, opposite sides are congruent. So we know that AD is equal to BC. Well, BC is 2x plus 1. And if x is 5, that means that AD is 2 times 5 plus 1. 2 times 5 is 10, plus 1 is 11. So your final answer is AD equals 11 in a box. All right, so if you hadn't tried the first one on your own, pause now and try the second one on your own. All right, looking at number two, the first thing that should pop out to you is diagonals. And so that should immediately take you to the rule that we just learned about how diagonals bisect each other. So that means Q is the midpoint. So if Q is the midpoint, I'm going to label my diagram. So that means WQ and QY are congruent to each other. So that means 4A minus 10 is equal to 3A minus 5. I want to solve this equation. So if I subtract 3A from both sides and add 10 to both sides, I find that A is equal to 5. They asked me to find YW. YW is the length of the whole diagonal. And we, can, we know that each piece, QY or QW, is uh, half the size of the whole. So I could say that YW is equal to 2 times QY. Could I have picked QW? Yes, I just picked QY because I felt like it. 
So 2 times 3a minus 5, we already know a is 5, so I'm going to plug that in. 2 times 3 times 5 minus 5. So that's 2 times 15 minus 5. 15 minus 5 is just 10. So yw is equal to 2 times 20, I mean 2 times 10. So yw is equal to 20 in a box. Next, we're going to look at the converses of all the things we've talked about so far. So we know the converse is just the flip-flop from what we had before. So before, we had if a quadrilateral is a parallelogram, then the opposite sides are parallel. The converse is if both pairs of opposite sides of a quadrilateral are parallel, then the quadrilateral is a parallelogram. So the most important thing there, I've already underlined, opposite sides parallel, then parallelogram. Next, if both pairs of opposite sides of the quadrilateral are congruent, then the quadrilateral is a parallelogram. Again, most important things are underlined. Opposite sides congruent, then parallelogram. If both pairs of opposite angles of the quadrilateral are congruent, then the quadrilateral is a parallelogram. Opposite angles are congruent, then you have a parallelogram. If one angle of a quadrilateral is supplementary to both consecutive angles, then the quadrilateral is a parallelogram. So one angle supplementary to both consecutive, then parallelogram. And last one, if the diagonals of a quadrilateral bisect each other, then the quadrilateral is a parallelogram. So if diagonals bisect, then you have a parallelogram. And next, go ahead and put some stars around this. This one, there wasn't um, a statement before about this, but this is another way to tell if a quadrilateral is a parallelogram. So if one pair of opposite sides of a quadrilateral are congruent and parallel, then the quadrilateral is a parallelogram. So if one pair of sides is congruent, so I picked my left and right sides, go ahead and mark them congruent on your paper, and they have to be parallel. So this is the same set of sides. Both times I pick the left and right side, they have to be congruent and parallel, and that tells me that it's a parallelogram. All right, let's finish up with one last example. Determine the value of x and y to change the quadrilateral to a parallelogram. So right away, something should stick out at you, that you have diagonals. And we know that if the diagonals of a quadrilateral bisect each other, then the quadrilateral is a parallelogram. So if we want this to be a parallelogram, then we want those diagonals to be bisected. So we want that point in the middle where they hit, um, they intersect, to be the midpoint. So let's solve for x first. If we want that to be the midpoint, then we want these two to be congruent. And then for y, we would want, of course, the opposite two to be congruent. So let's set up our equation for x. If those two pieces are congruent, then 12x minus 17 is equal to 8x minus 5. I'm going to subtract 8x from both sides. I'm going to add 17 to both sides. And so 4x is equal to 12. Divide both sides by 4, x is equal to 3. Go ahead and pause the video and try to solve for y. Alright, solving for y, we're going to follow the same process. We want ac to be bisected. So we want 5y plus a equal to 4y plus 10. I'm going to subtract 4y from both sides, I'm going to subtract 8 from both sides, and I'm going to find y equals 2. Both of my answers are, of course, in a box. All right, make sure you have all the pictures and all the examples on your notes, and I will see you in class.